Welcome, MC2 Burleson here with the Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy, Mick Palm Mike Stevens, to discuss this year's CPO 365 Phase 2, the eSailor Initiative, and to find out what sailors are there asking in the fleet. Mick Pond, thanks for being here. Good, Mr. Burleson, thanks for having me. Great. Now, it is chief season, and now it's on the Phase 2 for the CPO selectees. Mm -hmm. What is your expectation for this phase of CPO 365? You know, my expectations are what they've been for the last uh, three years uh, and what we've done all year, and that is to provide professional leadership training and development while treating one another with dignity and respect. And I'd really like to thank my chief's mess and all of our first class petty officers for the great work that you've done throughout the last few years. And I look forward to seeing those anchors uh, on those collars of our new chief selectees on the 16th of September. Good job. Thank you. Now, the e-sailor initiative was, la was launched in, in Great Lakes, where for the first time sailors were allowed to use tablets for, for uh, training and to learn. Um, what's the latest news coming out of Great Lakes about that? Mm -hmm. Well, the e-sailor initiative is about getting mobile technology in the hands of our sailors to make them more mission ready, to enhance their learning capabilities. Uh, so we believe that starting uh, at RTC Great Lakes was the right place to really get our our hands and our minds around this new initiative. And then we hope to move that on to our A schools, our C schools, and one day out into the fleet. Uh, and for our commands that are already out there outside of RTC that have embraced eSailor and are using it as part of their, uh, their learning program, I just want to say thank you for being a vanguard in that area. And uh, I look forward to seeing what mobile technology brings to the Navy in the future. Now, Mick Pond, recently you got back from travel where I'm sure you had the opportunity to talk with a lot of sailors about the recent policy changes and pay and compensation. Now, are there any questions that sailors are, are, are asking about that in the fleet? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my wife, Teresa, uh, who is uh, one of our Navy's ombudsmen at large, uh, myself, obviously, and uh, the Mick Pond's team, a couple other of the folks in the office, we made a 25,000-mile trip to the Far East. Uh, we were able to go to Japan. Uh, South Korea, uh, Singapore, Guam, and Hawaii, and then we returned home. And in each location, uh, we did three all-hands calls, two with our sailors and one all-hands call in the evening with spouses and ombudsmen. Many of them had questions about pay and compensation. Mostly they were curious and just wanted to know how it would affect them uh, and their families. So we took the time to explain it and to break it down. Uh, what they're really interested about is the new retirement proposal, because it's not actually in place right now, uh, where this gives uh, sailors and their families options and choices. Right. So it's, it's uh, comparable to, it's a thrift savings, but it's comparable to a 401k-like system uh, where, you know, the Navy will match uh, a contribution that the sailor puts in and then over time that investment will grow and, uh, and then eventually they'll be able to withdraw from that investment. Um, that's the short of it, there's much more to it, so please keep your ears open, your eyes and ears open and uh, pay attention and read as much as you can on it because for the sailors that have not joined the Navy just yet, uh, it will certainly impact them when this occurs and for some of our sailors that are in the Navy, depending on the time frame that you've served, uh, it has a strong possibility of uh, impacting you, or should I say, providing you with an opportunity to participate in this new retirement plan. So we'll, we'll see what, uh, what they roll out in the near future, and I look forward to seeing it. That's great. Now, the NAV admin just dropped detailing the big changes to the PFA policy, and they were pretty big. Um, and it, you, it seems to focus more on your year-round fitness for, mm -hmm. uh, for uh, sailors. Are, there, are you getting any questions from sailors in the fleet about the, about the recent changes? Uh, we're getting some questions, much like pay and compensation, more curiosity, how does this impact or affect me? And, you know, what I'd like to share with our sailors out there is that this is really about total sailor fitness year-round. Uh, we want to make sure that you're fit and ready all the time because we never, never know uh, when we're going to need to do something that's going to require us to be at our peak physical performance. But this is also about a healthy mind uh, and this is also about mission readiness for the Navy. It's certainly not about lowering standards. This is uh, really about finding what the right standards are and applying them across the fleet and having a healthy Navy 365 days a year 
uh, rather than two times a, uh, two times a year, if you know what I mean. Right. Okay. Right. Makes sense. Great. Well, thank you for being here, McPun, and answering all the questions. Professor Burleson, it is an honor. Thank you awesome. very much. Thank you. Honor meeting you. Thanks. Honor meeting you. Be sure to check out this week's rundown, where we will discuss the latest news from the Chief of Naval Personnel Office coming to the fleet.